Hi, my name is Reina and I'm a cosplayer. All these years later, Attack on Titan finally released its final episode. And for this, I decided to make a very special cosplay video. Mikasa and Eren cosplay transformation video. Let's jump in. I'm already wearing my lace front wig and now I'm applying a full coverage foundation with a beauty blender. Forgot to mention I used this NYX full coverage foundation and now I'm going to use the Maybelline Super Stay Concealer. I'm blending it into my foundation with a beauty blender. Then I'm also using NYX Mineral Finishing Powder, taking just a teeny tiny bit of this powder and applying it onto my eyes with a sponge. I'm going to do black eyebrows, so first of all I'm taking this very slim eyebrow pencil and correcting the shape of my eyebrow. Now I can take a bigger pencil and I'm also taking a brush to feather out this end. Next I'm taking the Brow Fixing Gel by Vivian Sabot and brushing my hairs up. At last I'm taking the Black Eyebrow Shadow. I'm going to do coat crease for this look, so first of all I'm taking this L'Oreal Full Coverage Concealer, picking it up with a brush, and I'm applying it on my crease only. And I'm also curving out the lower edge of my brow. And I'm blending it in with my finger. Once the concealer is dry, I'm taking this beige eyeshadow and applying it in the inner corner and moving diagonally towards my brow. Then I'm taking this light brown eyeshadow and applying it diagonally under the beige eyeshadow and also blending them together. Next I'm taking this dark brown eyeshadow and applying it under the brown eyeshadow and basically putting it in my crease and slightly extending it towards the inner corner. It's time to cut the crease, and for this I'm taking the same L'Oreal concealer and cutting the crease. I think I'm going to make it even higher in the outer edge, and also blending it into my foundation with a beauty blender in the inner corner. Next, I'm taking this pearl eyeshadow and applying it in the inner corner of my eye. And also moving diagonally up to the cut crease. Then I'm taking this brown eyeshadow and applying it diagonally under the pearl eyeshadow and blending them together with these circular motions. Then I'm taking this black eyeshadow and applying it in the outer corner of my eye, just under the cut crease and moving towards the middle. So the idea here is to make my eyes look upturned and for that I have to go for this almost cat eye look. So that's why I'm applying this black eyeshadow in this almost rounded fashion. And I'm blending it with the brown eyeshadow. I think I have to add a bit more right here, right under the cut crease. Also, I don't quite like my blending, so I'm taking the brown eyeshadow again, adding it over the black eyeshadow. That's better. And I'm also taking pearl again and blending it with brown. That's it. Next, I'm taking the same black eyeshadow and placing it under my lower lash line. And I'm also taking this pearl again and placing it under my lower lash line in the inner corner and blending it with black. Time for the eyeliner and I'm taking this liquid eyeliner and I'm drawing a line over my cut crease. If the eyeliner slips a bit, don't start panicking. Just take a teeny tiny bit of concealer, correct your mistakes. Oh, 
Okay, that has been an overcorrection. Now I'm using the eyeliner again. I swear, it's just very inconvenient to draw the line when I'm holding the mirror. I'm not that bad, usually. <laughs> and now I'm drawing the wing. And I'm drawing a very thin line right here in the inner corner, as thin as possible. Then I'm also using the same eyeliner onto my lower lash line. And I'm going lower in the inner corner of my eye to make my eyes look upturned. Like this. And I'm also extending the upper line and drawing a triangle right here. Like this. And I'm also using the mascara on my upper and lower lashes. I've put on the false lashes and I took a pair that's identical to these ones. I've picked them because they're not too big, not too small, and also they have this nice individual lashes look. And they get longer towards the outer corner. Now I'm also taking this silver glitter and applying it between the triangle and the line. It's time for the contouring, so I'm taking the blush and applying it on my cheekbones. Then I'm taking the contour shade from this NYX palette for contouring. This one. And applying it below the blush and feathering it a bit downwards. Then I'm also applying it on my forehead and feathering it downwards. And I'm also applying it under my chin. And then I'm taking a smaller brush, dipping into the contour shade. I already did. I'm contouring my nose. So I'm placing the contour shade on both sides to the bridge of my nose and feathering it towards my brow. Next, I'm dipping into the highlighter shade from the same palette and I'm placing it right on the bridge of my nose and to the both sides and blending it with the contour shade. Next, I'm taking the bronzer from the same palette and placing it below my cheekbones. Now I'm taking the highlighter from this Vivienne Sabot highlighter palette and tapping it above the blush and also gently feathering it. Mikasa has a scar on her right cheek so I'm taking this brown pencil and drawing the scar over the highlight. <laughs> okay. And I'm also taking a darker brown pencil and I will try to make the edges a bit darker. But I don't see any difference, honestly. Mm -hmm. I decided that red lips would fit the best for this look, so I'm taking the red pencil and outlining my lips. Then I'm also taking the red lipstick and using it on my lips. As the last step of my makeup, I'm using this Relo's Illuminating Fixing Spray. Sparkles! I used acrylic paint to make fake blood, and it's not paint for fabric, it's just regular acrylic paint. I used it because I already had a bottle, and I didn't feel like buying a new one, saving money on cosplay. So I took a bit of water in this plastic container, just a bit of water, because you can always add water, but if there would be too much water, the paint just wouldn't be saturated. Then I picked up the paint with a brush and added it to the water. And it's important to stir the paint a lot to make it mix properly with the water. After adding quite a lot of paint to the water, I tested the mix on a sheet of paper to see if I like the color, and I didn't. <laughs> so I decided to add even more paint and test it again, several times, until I liked the color. Once I got the proper mix, it was time to spray it on the dress. So I hung the dress in a bathtub and splashed the paint on it with a brush. And I decided to test it on the back of the dress first. It would be probably better to test it on a separate piece of fabric, but I didn't have the time to. 
I can't tell exactly what kind of fabric that is, but I discovered that because the fabric is very thin and transparent, the fake blood was spreading on the fabric, making the drops way wider than I wanted them to be. So I decided that I'm going to splash the paint on a part of the dress and then start immediately blow drying it. Kinda worked better. So I made these drops of the fake blood on the bottom part of the dress and then I also made the splashes on the top part of the dress. And it's important to clean the crime scene once in a while if you don't want your bathtub to end up looking like an actual crime scene. Then I decided to add even more blood to this part of the dress to kind of create focus on this area and make it look more authentic. For this I took the brush with the paint and pressed it against the waistline of the dress to make the blood flow down. And then I decided to add even more blood to the bottom part of the dress to make it look as if I was walking through a pool of blood. And I discovered that the best way to do it is to put the paint on the bottom part of the dress with a brush and then spread it with my hands. And I should have used gloves while doing it. For this video, I also needed one particular prop. Guess who that is? It's my boyfriend. So I ordered this human spine from AliExpress. Well, obviously it's not an actual human spine, I think it's 3D printed. And it wasn't assembled when I bought it, but luckily for me every vertebra had a marking indicating its exact placement in the spine, and each vertebra also had a hole, or what was supposed to be a hole, but it didn't go through the whole thing, except for the last vertebra. So I had to drill the holes by myself. At first I took a thin drill, because the wires that I wanted to use for assembling the spine were quite thin, but it didn't work at all. So I switched to a bigger drill, and it was barely working, and the drill got stuck on the vertebra a lot. So then I decided to switch to a different drill, which was the same diameter, but different composition, I guess, and it did work a bit better. The lumbar vertebrae were the hardest to drill since they are the biggest, but when I got to the upper thoracic and cervical vertebrae, I basically could drill them in one go, which makes sense since they are way smaller and also I think I just got better at this. And when I finally managed to drill the holes, I put the vertebrae on a wire that was bent on one end, and I also decided to use several wires for this to add some extra support, because the wires were very thin. And also they weren't long enough for the whole spine, so at some point I had to bend the wire and cut it off and add a new wire and then do the same for the next wire and so on. This way the spine was completed, almost. I decided to leave out the last two vertebrae because I didn't know how to add them to the spine, how to drill holes in them, so they had to go. Moving on to the head itself. Angela was going to cosplay Aaron for me and I put on Nico Robin wig on her and pinned it to prevent the falling. Obviously it would be way better to order a proper Aaron wig, but I didn't have time for that, so I just decided to use whatever I have in my cosplay wardrobe. And Nico Robin was the best option. <laughs> well, Aaron actually has black hair in the manga, so it's... it's canon! It's canon! Except for the bangs. <laughs> And I also decided to draw Aaron's markings on Angela's face. Ideally, Aaron's face shouldn't be showing on a video, the showcase part of the video, I mean. But I didn't know if it would accidentally get caught on the camera, so I decided that better have them than not.
Then I took the spine, shaped the wires in a row, and shoved them into Angela's head. It's surprisingly secure. And I also decided to splash some fake blood on the spine. So that's the end result. I hope you enjoyed this video, I definitely did, and so did Aaron. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and maybe subscribe to my channel. Also click on this video if you want to check out my Season 1 Mikasa cosplay transformation, I would be happy to see you there, and I really hope to see you in my next video. Have a nice day, bye!